The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets a little bit mixed. <clears throat> excuse me, this morning we got earnings, so that's driving some of the action in terms of differing numbers across the indices. But right now you get the S&Ps down about four tenths percent. You're trading off 17 points. Back that off away. Trading off 17 points at. It's not picking up that last five minute bar for me. Come on, there it is. We'll do it again. Trading off 17 points, off four tenths percent, trading at 42.53. Now you see the action overnight. We were as low as about 42.46. You make that low at about 3:30 a.m. Eastern time. We charge higher to 42.64, and we're negative off that price level right now. Nasdaq 100. We're off by 96 points. We're going to break down Microsoft. Strong numbers out of Microsoft, man. Google will break them down. Pretty strong numbers, but they missed the mark in cloud as well. So Google trading lower, Microsoft trading higher. You get the Dow. Positive this morning by 57 points on the Dow. We got some earnings driving that action up two tenths percent, and you jump to the Russell, negative by 11 right now, off six tenths percent. We jump over to crude, 83.77, quite a pullback from the $89 last week. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat at 40 past the hour. We always talk some forex. We'll talk a little bit of crude as we always do as well, with crude pulling back a bit to 83.78. Gold contract this morning, holding up pretty well. Quite the day yesterday for gold. We drive down to 1970. We're back to 1987, basically right where we were in the early hours of yesterday, in the late hours of yesterday afternoon. Gold at 1987. And we got to jump to notes and bonds. A little bit of a pullback. So just like that, right? It seemed like, my goodness, we got the rise in the early hours of yesterday morning to 106.22. And you had to be thinking, right, all right, is this it? Did we get the reverberation in terms of yields spiking at highs? And just like that, we saw the 10-year, right, from early Monday, 105.12, traded up basically a point and a half. And we've probably gotten back about 50% of that move, just like that. Yeah, we sure have. Right at the 50% mark is where we got to this morning. Check it out, 106.04. You put this thing on a longer-term basis, lower lows and lower highs is the trend when you're looking at the 10-year, and now we're right in the middle of that channel line on the 10-year. The 30-year this morning, down about 20 ticks, 109.12. We always talk some bonds with our man Teddy coming up at 40 past the hour as well. And we jump to the dollar index. Talk about some moves recently, right? How about that move early into yesterday? You got it all back by 11.45. I mean, just mammoth. A dollar down, a dollar up from where we were early Monday to middle of the day Tuesday. We have strength yet again at 106.38 right now. And you are talking about a 10-year pushing 4.89. So we hit 5%. We're pushing 4.89. The yield on the 10-year right now, a little bit of weakness in the S&Ps. We jump over to the big dogs. There's Microsoft's action for you. You're going to be up about $16. That's pushing almost a 5% acceleration to the upside. Now, Microsoft had a $13 move built in in either direction. Okay, so what? You're going to open up about 16 almost the implied move. Uh, you get a bullish move and some strong numbers from Microsoft. We'll get into those in a little bit. You jump over to Google, and uh, almost the exact opposite. You drop $9 on Google. What is that? That's about a 6% to 7% drop for Google shares. 131.53 right now. You made it as low as 130.02 last night for Google shares. Some of the other companies out with their numbers, Texas Instrument Instruments was out last night. They're trading down $10 as they missed the mark for Texas Instruments. And then you got Boeing. Boeing out this morning, trading higher. Up about 6 bucks to 188.40 from 182.36. And that's where we kick off the show. They actually cut the delivery goal for the year for 737s, but they post a quarterly loss on production troubles. But guess what? It's not about what have you done for me lately. It's what are you doing for me in the future? Um, but they cut it. They cut it from four, four to 450 to 
okay. They had previously said they were going to deliver 400 to 450 this year. Now they're going to deliver 375 to 400. And they lost more than the operations. But they still expect, that's why I was looking for this, they still expect to hit a target of producing 38 of the max jets a month by the year's end, a key milestone as Boeing customers face delayed deliveries. So interesting how it goes, right? From the supply side of things to the demand side of things. It's amazing. They're pushing out basically one, one plane a day, a little bit more than that, right? 38 of them a month by the year's end, and they have a backlog, and, and, and that's what the market may be focusing on here. Nonetheless, you got Boeing shares trading higher. Yeah, how about Apple as we come into this first break? Interesting. This one was out yesterday, I believe. I was reading this last night, October 20th. Yeah, it was out yesterday afternoon. But it is interesting when you think about I have an iPhone. I've had Apple TV. I don't think I have Apple TV anymore because you get it for, what, a year or two or something like that when you get a new phone. It's something I barely ever use. And so it's interesting. They have all of this. I actually use Prime much more often than I get into Apple TV ever. And they're going to redesign their TV app in a step toward consolidating the company's various video offerings. And part of that effort to become a bigger player in the streaming world. So they recognize, man, there's something going on with Apple TV, probably for the amount of money they spend and the ability for them to capitalize off of the ecosystem and, and the value that they create by keeping you in that Apple TV ecosystem, et cetera. You know, Dan Ives of Webbush, he's been talking about that the play is that Apple probably buys Disney eventually. Uh, excuse me. Yes, Disney uh, or ESPN. Forgive me. They were talking about it recently when they started breaking out the ESPN numbers. Nonetheless, it makes sense that they ramp that up, man. Prime, you know, Bezos gets it in terms of having an app like that. Bezos, they got Thursday Night Football right now. And I tell you, folks, if you've ever watched football, try it out on Amazon on Thursday night. And what do they got? They got uh, we're pulling up Amazon shares. They're out with their numbers on Thursday. Uh, they trade lower on some of the cloud numbers of Google is what's happening there from Amazon shares. You trade from 128.56 down to 126.71. We got some market weakness as well across the board. But they have... Basically, AI and machine learning driven. I gotta, I gotta find what this, uh, what this is called. I'll find it during the break, because it's a special kind of way that you're able to watch football, and they almost they highlight defenders when they're about to blitz. You know, they're transforming how we watch live sports, and that's going to be the next thing that comes into these streamers. Amazon gets it with their Prime, and I think you're going to see Apple ratchet things back up in terms of trying to, uh, yeah, be a bigger player in the streaming platform, because they're really not right now. They get some great content, some great movies, but they're basically an afterthought as opposed to signing up. The moment my free trial, my free time on Apple TV expired as, as a product of having a phone, I didn't even think of signing back up, to be honest. Did not even think of signing back up, and I sign up for all the streaming platforms, folks. So that says a lot. Apple shares. Down with the Nasdaq this morning, trading down about a buck forty. Now, check out the move right away. We got Microsoft shares came out with their numbers first last night. They beat Google right out of the gate. They were both pretty quick, uh, but they beat higher. And then you had Google come out and trade lower in an instant. But it is interesting when you look at you got quite a spike last night on that first acceleration on the earnings. 200 points higher is where we were at one point in the NASDAQ 100. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network. We'll be right back in three minutes. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jumping around all the articles we got queued up, man, this morning. So we got MetaShares coming out with their earnings after the bell. We jumped to them real quick. So interesting how all of these companies have similar businesses in one aspect and different businesses in another aspect. You got MetaShares trading down about $2. You got the S&P off about 16 NASDAQ 100 off about 100 To talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV from the Schwab Network, Fast Market, with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the outstanding team at the Schwab Network. They break down the day's market action, and let's just get right into it. Kevin Hinks, a little bit of a tale of two stories last night with Google and Microsoft earnings. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, it's exactly right. It's, you know, much like in the past, and we, you, you can look for comparisons to when streaming was coming out, right? And we judged everything by, by the number of users and subscribers. Now we're getting into AI, and we're starting to deal with winners and losers just like that. And the metric that we're using so far between these two stocks is cloud growth based on AI. And it looks like, at least to start, that Microsoft is gaining market share on Google Alphabet Cloud, right? Their growth in Azure was 29%. Google Cloud was 22%. That was disappointing in Google Cloud. Their stock's down, even though their numbers were spectacular, Tommy. But you get judged now by whatever the market judges you on. And right now, it's growth based on AI. And Microsoft has such a, uh, a head start on some of these other companies. Remember, they were in Open Open AI, ChatGPT in 2019, they invested in these names. So uh, Microsoft really st starting to flex its muscles there, and they're trying to harness and monetize AI technology, Tommy. 
a pretty great breakdown, man. And those numbers, it's always startling the the um, high level of the bar that these public companies get held to. You put it well, man. You're growing 22 percent and we're talking on billions, man. But guess what? Microsoft's growing at 29 percent and actually accelerating growth. I think what, what was their last quarter, like 27 down, and then down to 26 yeah. and now they're up to 29. So even an acceleration of the percentages, just pretty amazing. Uh, and they're getting rewarded this morning. I got it up on the Thinkorswim platform. Microsoft trading at about 345 this morning. We, we go from there, Kevin, and we jump right to the next event. We got Meta out tonight. We have Amazon out tomorrow. We got Apple out next week, of course. Uh, but we got a little bit of weakness in the S&Ps. What do you think about the action in general in the market? Because we have a lot more, of course, out. We got Boeing out this morning. You got Texas Instruments. What do you think about the market down about 16 as we come into the opening bell in about nine minutes? Yeah, the e meetings down about three-eighths of a percent, a little bit of weakness. Uh, I think, you know, Google Alphabet's part of the E-mini. Remember, uh, the Dow is probably a little higher based on Microsoft and Boeing being higher pre-market. So that's going to be interesting to watch out, but how this plays out. But, yeah, you know, there's a lot of, you know, Tommy, I just had this discussion with Oliver Rennick, and it's one part reason why, with such good numbers, Google Alphabet is, is weak today is that, the bar was set very high. The stock has had an incredible run if you look at the chart. Microsoft had sold off off its highs. Google Alphabet was on a run. So why is that a cautionary tale? Look at Meta Platforms. Look at some of these other stocks that have had historic runs. Conversely, Boeing has gotten beat up lately from the 240s down to the 180s. It's bouncing today on, on some of their... I would almost call it a, a relief rally on numbers that weren't as bad as expected and still showing some promise in terms of deliveries and uh, overall manufacturing of planes going forward. So, you know, a little bit of a relief rally in Boeing, uh, strength out of Microsoft and weakness out of Google Alphabet. We'll see what Microsoft does throughout the day, though, because, you know, the E-mini is down three-eighths of a percent. That's going to weigh on, on these stocks that are in a bunch of these indices as you know i appreciate the analysis and yeah i was talking about boeing in the first segment pretty interesting right they scale back actually some of um the numbers that they were looking for for guidance but guess what like you said they they might be able to produce enough planes to to make it through some of that backlog and we got them up to about 187 from 182 <clears throat> with that in mind kevin do you guys have any equities you're talking about today coming up at 12 o'clock on fast market well like folio is going to do a presentation on ups it's coming out with earnings before the open tomorrow morning. Of course, in the first segment, we'll cover Met platforms. And then we'll look at MasterCard. Remember, yes, MasterCard today, and we'll look at overall spending and uh, the, the strength of the U.S. consumer. And so we'll cover, yeah, those three big, massive names today. Meta platforms will be real interesting, though. It's down about 2 bucks pre-market with, with the futures. And like I said, Meta platforms, we used to say that it was cheap for a long time. Well, it's not cheap anymore, Tommy, and uh, it's got a high bar. So cautionary tale when you watch Google Alphabet with meta platforms. But if they show the growth, if they show the uh, adaption of AI, things get real interesting here. Yeah, this chart of uh, Meta, as we all know, real interesting, absolutely shocking. We've gotten so much of that loss back. I got $88.09, the low, when I pull it up on the Thinkorswim platform. We're trading this morning at $310. And UPS, I jumped to them, man. Quite a chart for UPS. Talk about struggling. Down to 149.32. Yeah. Um, and that's making lows. When I just put this thing back on a three-year, on a weekly, uh, the lowest bar, the week we're in right now, man, which is pretty crazy. Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning, man. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too. Folks, check it out. 12 o'clock today, Fast Market from the Schwab Network. Every trading day right here on TFNN. We're fortunate to have the program. Kevin Hinks, Tom White. Uh, it's a great week to check it out, man. We are one out of three, I think, or three out of ten. Almost a third of the S&P companies reporting this week alone so you're getting many others, like we just said. Kevin gave the roundup well. Texas Instruments, right? Boeing, pretty interesting to see. Expectations. UPS, maybe expectations are going to be pretty low for UPS coming into their earnings. You jump over to the Analyze tab. They're out with their numbers tomorrow. You're looking at almost a 5% move priced into UPS shares for their earnings at 729 You jump over to Meta shares. you talk about some volatility, man. $24 for a $310 equity priced in for their earnings event. 
So not all, not all magnificent seven stocks are created equal, as in much more volatility premium priced into meta earnings after the bell tonight than any of the any of the other large tech companies when you're talking about on a percentage basis. Um, what are you talking about? 8% almost priced in in either direction for meta shares. But boy, this thing moves, to put it lightly. And absolutely remarkable that you get a big enough move, man. You're within stone's throws of all-time highs. Who would have thought that was coming when it was at $88 less than a year ago? Crazy. Absolutely wild, this market. All right, we got the S&Ps down about 17 right now at 42.54. Just chopping around where we've been basically since uh, about 8.45 this morning as we await the opening bell. And we got the NASDAQ off by 99. Dow being helped, as Kevin said. Microsoft, Boeing putting a lift on there as well. Now, remember that the Dow is price-weighted. Microsoft is a $344 stock. That is going to have an outsized impact on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, unfairly, I may add. But nonetheless, uh, they've chosen to price weight that index, which makes zero sense, as we've talked about many times. So when you get a big equity on a per share price basis trading higher, it has an even bigger impact. Uh, and then you got Boeing up by about $5 as well, trading at 187 Stay tuned, folks. It's going to be an interesting open. We'll break down some of those Microsoft and some of those Google numbers when we get back as well. Stay tuned. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P down about 20 points. That's pushing about half a percent in the red right now. NASDAQ 100, you're off by 105, 14,738. The market has so much to digest on mornings like this. You're talking about Microsoft, Google, Texas Instruments, Boeing this morning as well. Let's jump around and see how some of them are opening. Microsoft shares. They hold up pretty well, up by about 4%, up 1385 right now, trading at 344. You were as high as, what, 347 pre-market early this morning. You were as high as almost 350 on a couple spikes on the earnings last night. You jump over to Google. Oh, it's worse than we thought, folks. Google off 8.3%. Watch out, man. Yeah, talk about getting punished. And, yes, context is important. All right, Kevin said it well. Expectations sky high. This thing's been on a one-way trip. You open the year at $88. All right, you're still trading up, what, 40% on the year at 128.22 right now. But nonetheless, quite a quick give back from 140 to 128 right now on Google shares. You jump over to Microsoft as this market gives it up a little bit. Holding on, but giving it up as well as we're off to 342.70 with the S&Ps off by 23 points, trading at 42.47 right now. You get the NASDAQ off a full percent. No, not quite. Nine tenths. 137. Dow holding on to gains. Let's jump around to Boeing. Shows like this are fun. Ooh, Boeing's giving it up too. Be careful on this one. Texas Instruments. Look at that. The one equity that's popping is the one that was getting punished the most almost. 142.20 Texas Instruments still down about 3.2% as this market trails off. They actually catch a bid on the open for TXN. Okay, let's break down some of these numbers on Microsoft and Google. We'll kick it off with Google, all right, because they're getting punished. And as Kevin said, man, you know, if you were ever running this business. Now, here's the kicker, though, okay? If you're ever running this business as a private business, boy, you better pat yourself on the back for the year you had. OK, revenue growth of 11 percent, double digits for the first time in more than a year. How about revenue of seventy six point six nine billion? OK, market was looking for seventy six earnings per share of dollar fifty five per share versus a dollar forty five. So they beat there as well. Here's the one that sticks out, though, folks. Google Cloud revenue, $8.41 billion versus $8.64. Now, further down in this article, all right, this is the, the street account estimate or whatever it is. They say they missed the mark by $20 million, which would be less than $8.64. Nonetheless, they missed the mark, okay? But check out just even, like, advertising revenue. So their total revenue, right, was 76.69. Of that, about 60 billion of the 76 they take in is advertising, okay? Google is an advertising company. Company Just checking back in, NASDAQ 100 really trailing off right now, off more than 1%, S&P's off by 24, the Russell off about 1% as well. I mean, they went from 54.48 billion a year ago to 59.65. Things were going really well a year ago, right? And they added $5 billion of advertising revenue. YouTube av advertising revenue beat analyst expectations. They came in at almost $8 billion alone. Their YouTube's TikTok competitor, which is their shorts, now has 70 billion daily views, up from more than $50 billion when they started the year. But cloud missed. All right. And these are the growths that we're talking about here. Look at how the 2021 was quite a year, man. 11%. Uh, is what they posted for growth, and that is total quarterly revenue. Year over year, percentage change in quarterly revenue. I mean, there was nothing like what these were companies were putting up in 2021, man. And yeah, cloud grew at 22%, as Kevin was talking about earlier in the program. Double the rate of expansion for the company as a whole. The business also swung to an operating profit of 266 million after losing 440 in the same period a year ago. Uh, yeah, the other bets, okay, and this includes Waymo self-driving, car business, they have a life science unit in there, Verily, revenue of almost $300 million, but they lost $1.2 billion. Yeah, so that's basically just uh, a little bit of a hole that they throw money into for future bets like self-driving cars like Waymo losing, Waymo losing $1.2 billion. Uh, nonetheless, so that's what they get punished for. You see the numbers, right? They beat on many things here. They beat on revenue. They beat on earnings. They beat on YouTube advertising revenue, traffic acquisition costs basically in line. But the market says, what about that cloud segment? Now, we jump to Microsoft, okay? Where do we start with Microsoft? So, 
Net income jumps 27%. That's, and this is the Azure cloud revenue growth accelerated after two years of deceleration. And this is always the amazing part of public companies, especially growth stocks. You don't have to be growing. You have to be growing at a growing rate, as in accelerating, right? You don't have to be growing at 26%. They want you accelerating that growth up to 27, 28, 29, 30, you know, catching a tailwind. And that's actually what Azure is still doing. Earnings per share, they crush it, almost three dollars at two sixty-five. Revenue, they crush it as well. With respect to guidance, okay, fiscal second quarter revenue in the range of sixty point four to sixty one point four. That implies fifteen percent growth, basically just in line though. As analysts were looking for right in the middle of that range at sixty point nine, revenue grew almost thirteen percent year over year in the quarter. Now remember, Google had eleven percent. Okay, net income. How about net income? Look at the margins they're dealing with, man. Revenue was 50 billion, we're rounding here. Net income was 22 billion. For every $50 you're giving Microsoft, man, they're taking 22 and saying, thank you, sir, have a good day, and putting it in your pocket, or ma'am. Uh, intelligent cloud segment produced 24.26 billion in revenue, up 19%. Market was only looking for 23.5. And here's the biggest number in there. Revenue just from Azure, jumped 29%, higher than the 26th the market was looking at. They don't disclose Azure revenue in dollars, but at constant currency, Azure revenue rose 28%, accelerating from 27%. Just bang up numbers across the board, man. Yeah, clients are flocking to the new generative AI tools in the cloud that are enhanced with software from Microsoft-backed startup OpenAI. The Azure OpenAI service now has 18,000 customers. Imagine that, man. Right, 18,000, up from 11,000 in July. Higher capacity for graphics processing units in Azure, boosted growth. And three percentage points of the quarter's Azure growth was tied to AI. They love the AI, man. I know, how about that investment in open AI? <clears throat> $10 billion, I think, is what they had, 10 billion. That company alone, now that 10 billion, right, Got them 49% of the company. Is that what it was or was it 51? I think it was 49% of the company. Basically got them 50% of the company, okay? And now that company is worth like 80 to 90 billion already. That's an investment. There are a few investments, folks, in some of these companies that really define, you know, part of their future. And Microsoft's investment in OpenAI, as Kevin said, started in 2019. You compare that to something like Google, right? Who's plowed money into is it barred right Whew, google down nine percent look at this thing man okay how many shares we got outstanding for google 12.6 billion shares outstanding and you're down 12 bucks you're losing 144 billion dollars in market cap watch out microsoft shares on the flip side holding on to the gains well up 15 dollars right now up by 4.2 percent we jump to meta down look at this market's getting punished man nasdaq 100 off 1.3 percent we're only eight minutes into the trading day stay tuned folks we're coming back we're talking to our man teddy cake stat we'll talk some forex we'll talk some commodities stay tuned you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. 
Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets continuing to escalate to downward prices right now with the S&P off by 33 points. That's about eight tenths percent in the red right now. You jump over to the NASDAQ, man. So much for tech companies saving things right now. The NASDAQ 100 off by 1.3 percent. We jump over to yields. You get the 10 year right now We're pushing 4.9 percent. You jump over to that dollar index dollar index right now. You talk about an acceleration from the lows of early yesterday. We're pushing 106.43 to talk about some of the action. Let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report. Every week he puts out new issues Monday morning. He puts a, updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check that out right under the front page of TFNN. You go over to the newsletters tab. You will see the Tiger Forex report. You can sign up, folks. It's $97. You get a couple webinar archives in there as well. You can cancel it any time. You pay nothing if it's within the first 30 days. It's a great deal. Check it out. And of course, don't forget about he's got a couple webinars here talking about capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. A recent webinar he did that's available under the services tab as well as Japanese candlestick patterns. But we're going to talk a little bit of Forex and a little commodities this morning. Teddy Kegzet, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, it always seems like we're having eventful days when you're on. But there, there are many eventful days in this market recently. Um, Maybe if we can kick it off with the dollar index, Teddy. Quite the day yesterday. We have yields kind of, you know, driving some of that action. I, I, where do you want? I, I know they're all related, but where do you want to kick things off this morning? You know what? A dollar index is a great place, and all I can say is the Tiger Forex report readers must love having tomorrow's Wall Street Journal today, huh? <laughs> you know, I mean, talk about nailing the low in the dollar index yesterday. You know, for right now, it's establishing a nice little range trade in front of the Fed meeting. And the bottom yesterday, I think, was really, really nice. You know, yields had a nice retracement going on for a couple of days, and now they're starting to hammer to, you know, support again. I think you're going to see that trend continue. You know, I mean, no matter what you say, the economic numbers and the data that's been coming out, you know, even though it may not be as frightening as it has been over the past two years, it's still atrocious, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, that's the reality of things, you know? So, uh, and I, yeah, I think that right now we hit a nice low in the dollar index yesterday. Um, do I see us having a major rally over the next week? No, I think that we're going to 
hold the low. We made a, we made a lower swing low yesterday, okay? But this is on a correction. The overall trend for the dollar index is a major bull. So right now we're, we're establishing that range trade in front of the Fed meeting. And, you know, we're going to trade pretty much, I think, a little bit sideways to higher over the next week as we head into it, you know, especially by the time we get to Tuesday, you know, we're going to go into a flatline trade, which speaking of flatline trade, look at the U.S. dollar yen. That thing's been hovering against, butting up, butting up against resistance, and it literally has become a flatline trade. You know, so I think that we're we're hitting some extremes on the trends. You know, and we're definitely going to push it because yields are step, definitely poking higher again. And you know, I don't care what the the overall consensus is. The reality is, scoreboard is scoreboard. Yields are pushing higher, and you can't. I would not try and fight that trend. Yeah, there's no denying that. Recently, and pretty interesting. I was going to jump to, I know you love looking at the 30-year along with other parts of the, the curve, of course, but um, how about the move, Teddy, from 107 to 110 and change in terms of three points? I know the move's been pretty dramatic in both ways. Uh, anyway, I see, you know, just, just mammoth moves on the 30-year, especially the 10-year, um, up and down the chain. But like you said, we're still sitting at 4.9% right now on the 10-year, which is a pretty remarkable number that you can't deny coming into a Fed meeting. Are you looking for any volatility with the Fed, do you think they're going to pause as, as many suspect is the case right now, at least in this meeting coming up? Does that, do you, do you take that into account? Do you have any biases there? Yeah, I do. You know, I, I, I know that overall the uh, the bias or consensus, if you will, is that they are going to hold and pause right now. Everyone does see the Fed possibly within the next six months raising one more time, but they think they're going to digest what they've done over the last year. I, I don't buy that. Um, you, here, here's my rationale with that is um, we, we talked about flight to quality last week, especially with all the conflicts that's going on in the world right now. We, we don't have flight to quality in the bond market right now. We have it in the dollar, you know, so and I think that overall, especially, you know, I, t I dwell on the 30 year because the long term drives rates in the long term. But if you look at the volume in the short terms, you know, I mean, you haven't seen the volumes in the euros, the one, the two, three and five year notes that like you have recently in a very long time, you know, and I think that that is going to continue to cook, you know. So and I think that as that boils over over the next month or two, um, I, I think that that's going to it's going to put pressure on the Fed, you know, the market rate, no matter what, you know, if you look at relatively where we're at. Um, all the interest rate markets should be much lower in pricing. Right now, we're at a premium. We're not at a discount for fair value. You know, so even if the Fed doesn't do anything, we should be on a fundamental and technical basis lower than we are right now. So I think the market's going to keep on pressing no matter what the Fed does. You know, but I do believe I still think that there's a, a much better chance of them still hiking in this next meeting next week than people are. I, w I would I would not really lean on this or be or say that, you know what, the Fed is going to do nothing. You know, I wouldn't say that next week's going to be a non event. Could it be? Absolutely. Um, but I would not be I wouldn't be shocked if they did raise a quarter point next week. It'd be pretty amazing if they did. Right? Right, if they came out and they said, you know what, man, we've been talking about 2% forever and we're not getting there. So why not? Right. Um, right. I know consensus is And wouldn't it be the there. right time to do it? Because do you want to wait till the December meeting? Are you going to shake up the holidays? You know, especially with the conflict, you know, there's a lot of talk that there's like, oh, the Fed's not going to do anything because of the escalation in the Middle, Middle East with things. Um, that hasn't, they don't care about the escalation in the Middle East. The Fed is, uh, they, they're dealing with the economy. They have nothing to do with the war industry. You know, that has nothing to do with their bearings on things you know it is it, so yeah, i just you make me think back of when they first started right that's when russia was just happening and they actually probably put off their first hike right is that what happened and that was a mistake um yes. for sure and they probably even came back and said that um that they let that kind of you know they didn't want to i think start that right i think it was right around then um Correct. just makes me think of the same thing right allowing something like that to get into it and, and you see where we are right now mm -hmm. um what about crude? We got to talk a little bit of crude, a little bit of a pullback to 83 bucks. But but as we've mentioned, man, a lot of strength. What do you think about crude at these prices, Teddy? Um, well, you know what? The high that we made a few sessions ago, uh, once again, the Tiger Forex report must love the uh, the bow upper boundary of our critical range there for resistance. Um, I, I think that we're flirting with a key support area. But where we're at right now, I think, is pretty much the floor. Um, could we see a spike, you know, that could get us down into, like, say, the upper 70 handles? 
Absolutely, but I would not get married to any type of, uh, you know, short in, at these levels. I would be looking to be a, a buying of breaks, you know, and especially right now, I would say with 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 the way that the market has pulled back in the crude oil market, I would I would say maybe give it a day or two before you start to look into it. Um, but I would say, especially in front of the weekend and going into the Fed meeting, I would rather be long than short that market. Nice. I like the detailed analysis, man. Wait a day or two, folks, maybe. But yeah, I, I was jumping through the technicals as you were doing it, man. This level, um, at least you got your back against the wall a little bit in terms of an area of support <laughs> there, potentially at that $82, $83 area. Teddy, we're coming I appreciate up a higher swing high also, so that's why I'm also with that buy break forecast. Nice. Yeah, volatility, man, just everywhere in this market. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always. Folks, go check out the Tiger Forex Report. You heard it, right under the newsletter tab. You sign up, you pay 97 bucks, you get a money back guarantee for 30 days. You can't go wrong. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good, Tommy. Take care. Okay, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back to finish up the show. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And boy, we got quite a market today, man. As I mentioned, right? So you're coming into meta earnings after the bell tonight. You're coming into Amazon earnings. We jumped to Amazon off 3% right now. Coming into Amazon after the bell tomorrow night. We get Apple shares next week off 1.3% right now. Found myself thinking during the break, you know what, man? There's only one Microsoft right now. And listen, Apple's its own animal, okay? I get that. 
Google's its own animal. They're on their own animal in their own ways. But there's only one Microsoft right now. And I think that's what the, the market's focusing on. You know, their ability to grow Azure, their ability to add three percentage points of growth in there just for open AI uh, with everything else going on, I don't think that's going to carry through. And you saw it with Google. And the market is continuing to punish Google shares now off 9.13%. I mean, it's kind of right where you open that first acceleration. These are 10-minute bars. So you drove higher into the opening bell. You drove higher in the first 10 minutes. And we've been shopping around there for the last 15 minutes or so in the 127 range. Uh, NASDAQ 100 off 1.4%. We jump to some of the other equities with their numbers. Texas Instruments, they catch a little bit of a lift off 3.2% now after trading down to 136. Boeing, yeah, not so much. Remember, we were going through those numbers, man, with Boeing. It's like, man, I guess they're just uh, really caring about the fact that they're going to be making 38 planes a month going forward to work through that backlog. Guess what? The market just traded lower by a full percent in the S&Ps, by about 1.5% in the NASDAQ, and Boeing gave it all up. That's $10, man. That's a 5% move from where we were coming into the opening bell for Boeing shares. So be careful in this market, man. You know, you go a little bit longer term, you know, maybe 4150 is an area I'm looking at right now, and that's the area of confluence, at least 4200 4150, 4140, that's the confluence area from the trend that began in March, which is the 618 area of 4140, and the trend that began back about a year ago in October, which drives to the 382 of about 4200 or so. Um, but yeah, there's, there's Microsoft's its own animal on that beat, man. And I think the market's a little worried it's not going to carry through to the rest of the tech companies. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's in the saddle. He's coming up for the Tiger Technicians Hour. Steve Rhodes after that 11. Fast market at 12. S&P's off by 36. NASDAQ off by 203. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's coming up next. Have a great Wednesday. We'll talk to you tomorrow.